Boys, 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 it's the Spokane Kid back at it once again, here to talk about clothes and shoes as always. Today I wanted to talk about my sample collection actually. I've got eight shoes to show off here that are all Nike samples, or uh, I guess seven and a half, and you'll see what I mean by that at the end. So let's not waste any time and just jump right into it and ask, what are sample shoes? So a sample shoe is a shoe that a company makes in pre-production and it's to test out two different things. Either A, it could be testing out just the overall design, how it looks, they just want to see how it comes out after it goes through the uh, manufacturing process. And the second thing is to do wear testing to see how it uh, actually holds up under real wear and tear. And so the very first shoe I'm going to show you is going to come from that second group. This is an actual wear tester shoe that I went through. And a note on wear testing, um, almost all samples come in sample size 9 for men. So if you need to be or want to be a wear tester, you need to be a sample size 9 or at least an 8.5, 9.5, like close enough to fudge a size 9. You'll notice all the shoes here are in a size 9. Um, this would become the Nike EXP 14 runner. Um, now when I got it, I actually uh, was doing Nike wear testing. Um, if you contact Nike and ask to be a wear tester, you can actually get approved to test out their shoes in advance. So a year before this shoe actually released, I got sent the shoe and I had to uh, test it for, I think it was 10 weeks. And they have a lot of requirements. You have to sign a non-disclosure form um, before the shoe comes out and stuff like that. You can't take pictures and post them online. I was even like kind of wary when I'd go to like sneaker events and stuff to like, I wasn't really wanting my friends to take pictures of, of them and stuff like that, uh, just to be respectful to the company. And uh, one of the things they also require is that you have to wear them a certain amount of hours per week. And I'm the guy that has a lot of shoes, as you can see. And so this is like the biggest first world problem ever. Like I almost never ever wear a shoe back to back days. And so to wear it the 20 hours per week or whatever was required, I was having to wear it like four days a week or so. So it was actually like kind of a, a hilarious first world problem where I'm like, Oh wow, I'm so annoyed that I have to wear this free shoe that Nike sent me a year before it comes out and I have to wear it uh, four days a week. Like poor me, I can't wear all my other shoes. Um, so of course I realize how ridiculous that sounds. Uh, but it was a really cool process. You get to uh, test out the shoe and this was a running shoe so they wanted to see will like a guy wearing this a certain amount of miles per week uh, will this shoe break down? Is something going to prematurely uh, cause a defect or anything? And so this shoe's pretty cool. Um, one really sick part about the shoe is it actually has the BRS logo here. Uh, and that's going to be for Blue Ribbon Sports. And so those who really know their Nike history um, will know that Nike was called Blue Ribbon Sports before it was called Nike. And so this doesn't even have super prominent Nike branding anywhere. It just had the BRS, which I think is just super sick. I hardly, I mean, you almost never see Nike shoes with the BRS logo. Um, but yeah, really cool running shoe, translucent upper. Uh, I don't even know, know if this colorway ever came out, um, but I've talked too long about this, so next shoe. So this next shoe is a pair of Nike Shocks, um, some all white ones. And you'll notice it's got the factory notes written on here. Uh, the first one did as well. And the, all the next uh, six of these shoes that I got, I got back in almost 2008, I believe it was. They're all gonna have the classic property of Nike, not for resale, stamping on the inside. That's the main giveaway to tell if it's a Nike sample. Sometimes if you look in on the tag, the uh, number across will be all nines and stuff like that. So there's some other ways to tell, but this uh, tagging is the main way to tell how it's a Nike sample. Um, and like I said, even that first one that I wore, was wear testing had the factory notes written on. And so years and years ago, when I got my first six samples, um, I was always wondering, what do these mean? And once I got to actually wear tests, like a decade later, it was cool to see that, oh, that was my test group. That was the number test group that I was in. And so the, the um, when it's a wear testing one, it makes sense for that. These I don't, weren't for wear testing. These were for design. And so that would be in the former category I talked about. And this one might be the most uh, cool one for like what people think is cool right now in shoes because it's actually a Nike SB sample. So this is going to be a Skeet, the Nike Skeet right here. Some models they still make. Uh, it does still have the factory notes on the inner swoosh on both of them, which is really cool. Get in the up close there, but it's uh, all brown. Um, got the different uh, colors going on there. We got suede, we got the leather, um, really sick. 
course has the sample property of Nike, not for resale stamping as they all do. This next one's really funny actually. So this is a weightlifting shoe and this is a Team China 2008 Olympics. Uh, and that was actually when it was the Beijing Olympics, I believe. Um, so this is the, weight, the weightlifting shoe for Team China. Uh, super funny, really interesting sample. And this one I actually wore at a college party. We were having a beer Olympics. And so each team was set up as a different country. We were Team China. So of course I had to bust these bad boys out. Um, so I've actually wore them before out in the wild, even though they're weightlifting shoes. Uh, but yeah, this is a really funny one. This next one was my favorite of all time back in the day. I wore the crap out of these so much, in fact, that these soles started splitting apart and I actually had to get them repaired actually back here because they were just splitting because um, I want to preserve these bad boys. I just loved them so much. Um, just such a classic looking 90s shoe. Got the elephant print going on. Um, it just, you know, this just re reminds you of the 90s. So it's Nike Air Assault. So this is going to get you a... Uh, good look at what an inside sample tag can look like. Here's the uh, inner sample property of Nike not for resale. And yeah, I wore the crap out of these. I even wore them like hiking on a mountain and stupid stuff like that. I wore them to parties. I just, uh, I wore these so much. I need to start bust busting these bad boys out again. I haven't worn them in like six years probably. Um, but yeah, one of my favorites of all time. This next one I think is like a Nike golf, like casual golf shoe. Um, all white, got the silver swoosh going on here. Give you a hit of the, the sample part there. And this one I wore a lot too, actually. The factory notes were written on the inside here and it's rubbing off. I don't even think you can see the factory notes anymore at this point. Um, but yeah, random shoe, wore them a lot, got my wear and tear. Um, this one's going to be a Nike basketball shoe. I have no idea what the name of this is. The upper feels like a, a Nubuck or something. And then uh, some plastic hardware around here. Um, let's see if we can get the sample. It's hard to see, but trust me, it's there. This one has a really uh, hard heel counter in the back though. And so I don't know uh, what was going on, but it actually really cut up the back of my heel when I would play basketball in these. So. Sometimes I'll just wear them like casually, casually. Um, but I, whenever I played basketball, they actually like kind of hurt my heels. So maybe it's a good thing this didn't go to production or who knows, maybe it did. I don't really know much about this shoe, honestly. Um, pretty cool though, random sample. Looks like the factory notes were over here. They're rubbing off. Cause like I said, I wear my shoes. I don't care if they're samples. I don't care how rare they are or how much they resell for. Wear your kicks, people, wear your kicks. And if you remember at the beginning, I said seven and a half shoes to show off. So I've shown, shown you seven so far. You might be wondering what I meant by that. Um, I actually got to go to this invite only event where some of the Adidas and Nike executives that were in charge of uh, Nike uh, basketball, like product development and stuff like that. And they, you know, came together in Portland here to show off for some kids uh, how to take apart some shoes and stuff like that. Um, so I actually have a box here of a Nike sample that we literally cut up. So I've got like the tongue. Um, let's see if you want to get it to focus. Here's uh, where it went around the heel counter wrapping. Got the <laughs> midsole and outsole combo. And you'll see right here, it's got the property of Nike not for resale that we all know and love. So that was the eight pair or the seven and a half pair, like I was saying. Um, and you might be wondering like, how do you get samples? How can you start Nike wear testing? Um, there is a site somewhere called, I think it's called nikeweartester.com. Give me an email, send in a, like a application basically. I just know a lot about shoe structure and how foot mechanics work. And so I got accepted right away and I have some Nike connections. Um, and another way is to find them out in the wild. Um, if you don't live in a major city, it's not going to be very often that you stumble into a sample. You're most likely to see them at outlets because that's when they slip through when it's not supposed to be like a major release. It might just show up at an outlet. Um, another way is thrifting. Um, and so I actually live in Portland, Oregon, which is the sneaker mecca, both for the Nike headquarters here in Portland. Uh, it's also Adidas headquarters. And oftentimes samples will just show up at the thrifts. The reason being when you work for Nike or Adidas, you're not allowed to profit off of the shoes. Uh, except a certain VP we know. 
anyway, <laughs> um, you're not allowed to profit off the shoes. And so instead of uh, selling them, if they have way too many samples and stuff, they'll give them to family and friends. Sometimes they don't even have enough family and friends to give them to. And they'll literally just bring a bag of samples to like a Buffalo exchange or another type of thrift store at a Goodwill. And they'll just be chilling there. So whenever I go out thrifting and I'm looking at the shoes, I go straight for the size nines. Samples almost always come in sample size nine for men. And so I'll go straight to the, the size nine section. And a lot of times, because I live here, there'll just be samples at all the thrift stores. Uh, so I, I live in a really lucky area where that could happen. If you don't live in a big city, like I said, you're gonna have to either go to an outlet or go to eBay or something. Uh, eBay would be a great resource to try to find them. And as you can see, like a lot of these samples, like they aren't hype. Like a sample like this isn't hype. Like you could probably get this for super cheap on the low low on an eBay website. Maybe they're used and beat up like some idiot like me that wears all his uh, rare samples or whatever. Um, when you have a sample too, you really don't know how rare it is either. Like with that shoe um, that I wore tested, um, there was 14 of them. So that was a one of 14. Um, because of the, the wear test writing, I can actually tell on there. I do not know how to decode the rest of these. So if anyone knows how to read stuff like this, be able to tell what year or how many of them there were, hit me up, I'd love to know. I mean, this looks like a signature of the guy that signed off on it. So just to wrap this up, thanks for checking out all the samples here. Good talk to you guys. Follow me at the Spokane Kid. If anyone wants to DM me too and says they watch these videos, I'd love to talk. I'm really approachable, especially if you live in Portland. I mean, even down to meet up with people. But uh, thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.